You're listening to Coffee with Innovate Finance, where we speak with experts from the industry on the changing face of financial services and the future of fintech and financial innovation. I am Rashi Pandey, Associate Director of Membership and Growth, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Charlotte Fairhurst, who's Director and Head of Financial Wellbeing Business Development at Evelyn Partners. So thank you so much for joining me today, Charlotte. It's a pleasure. Delighted to be here. So can you tell us more about your role at Evelyn Partners and your background? What does heading up financial well-being business development entail? Good question. So I'm one of the team that's leading our new financial well-being proposition called Money Health. And at the moment, it's very much an all-encompassing role because this is effectively a startup within the wider group of Evelyn Partners. So there's lots going on, lots for us to all be uh, working on at the moment. But my core focus is speaking with businesses of all shapes and sizes and sectors to understand how they can enhance their employee value proposition. So it's all about talking to them about their people strategy, what are their priorities, what are the challenges that they're possibly facing with their team at the moment, and how can a financial wellbeing solution like Money Health help them to improve the uh, engagement of their team, reduce the stress that their team uh, are facing, and generally have a happier, healthier, more productive workforce. I love how you said people's strategy, because I think that's key, especially in today's world and actually in in, in every organization, right? People are at the heart of your organization. So what problems are you really trying to solve at Evelyn Partners when it comes to financial well-being and what is your vision and mission when it comes to it? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of data and stats out there that can frame the size and scale of the problem and the challenge that we're trying to solve. And unfortunately, in the UK, on any given day, over a quarter of the population are stressed out by money. So 26% on any day are anxious and uncertain because of money. Now, it's not taught in schools. It's not on the curriculum at schools, which is perhaps uh, a root cause of some of this. So a lot of people are going into their career, beginning their career without much knowledge around their finances. And that tends to say throughout their career, you know, we don't necessarily have the support that we need to understand if we're making the right decisions or actually if we could be doing something much better for, for our financial future. So what we're trying to do is support people, regardless of how much they're earning, regardless of their stage in their career and their age, how can we help them to improve their financial well-being? So this is all about coaching and guidance and technology that can help them to feel empowered to make better decisions. Uh, Actually, for the UK population as well, on any given day, 57% of people say that the number one cause of stress for them is their money. And this doesn't just stop at home. Of course, people take these concerns into the workplace as well. And that's why businesses are recognizing that perhaps they have a role to play in helping people reduce their financial stress. If people are worried about money, then that can mean that they're less productive. It might mean that they have more challenging relationships at work It might even mean that they're having to take time off work because they are worried about money or they feel like they need the time to uh, to fix that. People who are stressed by money are also over twice as likely to be looking for a new job. Now, for business, that's really bad news because that means that they're having to replace talent. They might be losing some of their very best people. And it puts a lot of pressure on uh, wage inflation as well. So there's lots of really good reasons why businesses want to support their team with their relationship with money, not just because it's the right thing to do, but also because it's a sensible business decision. This can have ultimately an impact on the bottom line. And on our mission, we're really on a mission to democratize access to financial support. It's previously been seen as something that is only really accessible to the very rich, 
those uh, perhaps uh, that are C-suite executives or, uh, you know, wealthy landowners. But actually, everybody should be able to access financial education and, and support and coaching. So that's how we are using technology and we're using expert financial coaches to make this accessible to everybody. And that's why businesses like to support everyone from their graduates, their latest interns, all the way up to the C-suite to ensure that everybody is supported. But that's amazing to see that you guys are taking this so, such an important topic. And I think especially back in the day, people didn't like to talk about money and the fact that you're making it very inclusive and transparent um, and, and making people more aware of this. Is, it's, it's truly wonderful. So can you share more about your financial well-being program and how did the program come about and what was the idea and market, you know, needed behind it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, perhaps to cover the, the second question first. So this came about because we were being asked by the corporates that we work with. So Evelyn Partners, we have uh, you know almost 10,000 corporate clients that we work with. And the conversation was coming up more and more frequently in terms of what can you do to help our people and not just the people at the very top of our business, but how can you help everybody? And well, for a very long time, for decades now, we've been providing educational seminars and we've been going in and speaking with employees of businesses uh, on a whole host of topics from you know, their pensions through to investing options. But actually, what could we do that goes beyond educational seminars? And that's why we, uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, introduced our technology solution to really amplify what we were doing in the financial well-being space. Now, we package that up uh, as money health, and there are now four key pillars that make up the money health proposition. The first of those is the digital platform and app. This is where we're making sure that employees can go and access some really smart tools and resources that can empower them to make better decisions. So whether that be around, you know, buying their next house or getting onto the property ladder or even thinking about starting a family and uh, having a child, you know, that's actually a, a big decision, but it's also a massive financial decision. So this is a one stop shop for employees to go and access resources, access tools and also really high quality educational content. The second pillar of Money Health is, I think, the game changer. And this is where we match every single employee with their own personal financial coach who are very experienced, uh, highly qualified individuals that can speak on any topic around personal finances. So whether it's uh, somebody that perhaps has just left university on top of their agenda is thinking about uh, paying off debt, well, they can speak to their coach about a plan, a personal plan for tackling that. Or it could be someone that is 25 years into their career and actually they're thinking about next steps and they're thinking about retirement and their pension. Well, again, they can speak to their coach about that. The third pillar of Money Health are those educational seminars. And as I said, that's really where this all started from. And they're still so important because a lot of people really value having that opportunity to sit down in a room, raise their hand and ask questions and go and speak with uh, with an expert on a particular topic. The fourth pillar is executive consulting. And this is where we offer one-to-one -one bespoke sessions with the senior executives of businesses who are likely to have the most complex issues and uh, arrangements of their personal finances and also the least amount of time. So that's why we offer on top of the coaching the opportunity to sit down with one of the Evelyn Partners financial planners and take a deeper dive into their finances. And also think about this from an investment perspective and a tax perspective as well. And of course, that's where Evelyn Partners uh, is uniquely placed because we bring all three of those areas of expertise to sit around the client and uh, take that holistic view. I love how you've described and encompassed it all, you know. So why should companies invest in this? So it's not just the right thing to do. And I think there's a very, very compelling argument as to 
you know, that alone, why companies um, are taking more of a paternalistic approach and recognizing that if they want their people to be happy and if they want their people to be loyal, then they should look after them. You know, that's that's quite a simple and clear um, argument there. But going beyond uh, you know, reasons for enhancing the uh, the employee value proposition, there are some really strong reasons for, uh, yeah, for the business case for this. And I'll pick out just three of those. First of all, people who are stressed by money are six times more likely to struggle with their productivity. So imagine if a quarter of your workforce are unproductive or less productive than they could be, that starts to have a, a real knock-on effect on uh, you know, perhaps the, the revenue um, being generated or uh, other uh, important factors. Uh, they're also over twice as likely to be looking for a new job, as I said before. So there's huge costs that are associated with that. If you think of just the average of uh, 1.5 times salary as the cost to replace someone, and that's not even taking into consideration the time, you know, the uh, the downtime when someone's gone and the impact on morale. Uh, and the third reason I want to just pick out here is that people who are stressed by money are significantly, well, seven times more likely to be taking time off. And in more extreme examples, that's when people are taking time off because they're stressed. And that, um, again, is is um, a bad situation to be in. So that's why businesses are looking at uh, the ways that they can enhance their uh, employee benefits, how they can therefore uh, improve productivity of the team if they're happy and they're focused. They can also minimize those people-related costs that might be born from people taking time off or from uh, people uh, needing to be replaced. And finally, possibly the most uh, important reason for most businesses is being that employer of choice. How can they stand out above uh, you know, the, uh, the crowd, if you like, and how can they really demonstrate that they genuinely care about the the well-being of their people and I think this is a brilliant way of demonstrating that no I completely agree and it comes down to culture as well right why people stay at the end of the day so if you really want to differentiate yourselves so Charlotte you know thank you so much for sharing but I'm sure when you launched this program there must have been some challenges. So what were the challenges you faced when launching the program? And how have the opportunities and challenges evolved over time? Yeah, good question. So I think uh, a big challenge for us at the moment is growing our team quickly enough, which is a nice challenge to have. Uh, but there's so many opportunities to be supporting businesses and uh, engaging with businesses. And I think it's keeping up. <laughs> so we are, yeah, we're very much on a, a hiring spree at the moment to um, to bring on new team members. I think another challenge has been, uh, perhaps from the uh, the client's perspective, um, is really helping to educate around the difference between guidance and advice. Understandably, businesses are very nervous and apprehensive about being seen to tell their employees what to do and being seen to be advising them that really is is uh you know quite a risk um because imagine if something uh didn't go right and then the business uh you know felt responsible for the fact that they'd given uh, that advice to an employee so we spend a lot of time uh reassuring businesses and and educating around how guidance is very different to advice and that is what money health is providing so while they are qualified financial planners that are engaging with employees, they're not telling the employees what to do. They're actually talking to them about their different options. They're educating them. They're making them aware of the different routes that they can take, the pros and cons of those different routes, and ultimately empowering the individual to make that decision themselves. So that's been uh, yeah, something that's been very important for, for businesses to to understand and particularly when I'm engaging with the people teams or CFOs of businesses founders of businesses that's uh, a question that's very often at the top of, of the list for them and any trends you're seeing amongst your clients and employees that you can share with us 
Yeah. So uh, at the moment in particular, you know, while we are in August, uh, we have the end of the year or <laughs> we'll probably be there in a flash of a uh, of an eye. So we're already speaking with a lot of businesses about how they can make sure they've got a, uh, a financial well-being strategy in place uh, to help people right now and also in the lead up to, to Christmas and the end of the year when it can be typically quite a stressful time for people when there's a lot of expenses. Um, there's, uh, you know, sometimes people getting themselves into to debt or into uh, trouble around this time of year. So we're building uh, a number of launch plans at the moment to uh, start ramping up as we approach the end of the year. So we have a Talk Money Week in November, which is uh, a big occasion to to shout about money. Uh, you mentioned earlier that um, you know it, it can be a bit of a taboo, and this is all about trying to banish that and trying to make sure that people feel comfortable talking about money and recognizing the importance of uh, you know improving their knowledge around this. So, yeah, what can we do to um, to really, uh, yeah, support people through Talk Money Week, but also making sure that people are feeling uh, supported through the cost of living crisis right now? Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot going on around mortgages, interest rates more broadly, uh, you know, energy bills. There's a lot um, of additional pressure and stress on most households in the UK. So we are putting on a lot of uh, educational seminars and webinars on these topics to help people feel uh, supported at this time. I was going to ask, um, you, you talked so much about support. Is there any other way that, you know, Evelyn Partners are supporting its clients? I know you've yeah. answered pretty much most of it. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else that you can add? But there's more. There is more. Yes. So uh, we have a brilliant employee benefits team at Evelyn Partners who uh, work with businesses to understand and really conduct a, a health check, if you like, of the benefits that they're offering. So uh, they actually would work with a business um, initially on, a, you know, at, sort of at their own cost to understand where they're doing, um, where they're doing things really well, where they might be able to improve, and actually if there are any big gaps in terms of uh, how they're supporting uh, their employees. So we work, as you would imagine, we work very closely with our employee benefits team and uh, and where it's recognised that more could be done around employee well-being and specifically financial well-being, then of course that's where we can come in and uh, and start supporting them in terms of how they can enhance that part of their uh, employee benefits. And how do the challenges differ in the context of you know, financial well-being between your clients and internally at Evelyn Partners? It's a really good question because, of course, at Evelyn Partners, we have uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of financial experts. We have financial planners, we have investment managers, we have tax experts and accountants. So on the surface, you might expect there are big differences, but actually, I think there are far more similarities between our team at Evelyn Partners and what they need help with and actually what any other business needs help with. And you also see that with uh, the private banks that we're speaking with, with private equity firms that we're speaking with, uh, other financial institutions we're seeing a real common theme here, which is regardless of uh, you know, your professional expertise, there's almost always areas that you can still improve with regard to your personal finances. Because who's to say, you know, you can be a fantastic investment expert, but actually, you know, can you do more around your pension? And is there more you can understand around maximizing uh, allowances and that sort of thing? So uh, to answer your question, there's to be honest, not that much different between internally and, and what we're uh, supporting with and other types of businesses. And ultimately, it's about offering a, a bespoke solution to each individual and identifying for, for that person, where are they doing really well with their financial knowledge and where do they need more help? And we can identify that through our financial health check. And then based on the results of that health check, then the coach can tailor the support that they give to that individual. So, you know, you lightly touched upon the cost of living crisis, and I do have to bring that back because we cannot not talk about it, right, as we are currently living amidst, you know, the cost of living crisis. How do you think companies can better support their employees? 
especially through, through you know through this time yeah it's um it's interesting because we're speaking with lots of businesses at the moment who have been um giving one off payments or perhaps a couple of uh payments to their team uh you know very generously but to support them through the cost of living crisis which is which is fantastic and of course is very well received by uh by their employees but it's really reassuring when we're having these conversations with businesses that they recognize that that's not the magic bullet while it's you know while it's very helpful and it's very much appreciated it's not the solution and actually having a a more holistic approach to this and making sure that people feel appreciated which is probably the main benefit of offering these one-off payments that they feel seen but also that they feel like they have the um the knowledge and the resources to help them use that money most effectively. So we see that uh, as well, seminars at this time are incredibly helpful. And we're doing, as I said, lots of seminars around the cost of living crisis and sort of top tips for um, how employees can um, can yeah tackle this. But also going beyond that and actually providing that access to one-to-one coaching means that people can then take that further and go and speak to their coach and say well what does this actually mean for me like I've you know I've taken on board these suggestions but how does that apply to my life and what does that mean for me and my family and that is really how now uh, the businesses that we're working with are really cracking this and really having a big impact because it's not just you know, let's just give a one-off payment and it's not just let's do a one-off seminar but when you bring that all together and with uh, one-to-one coaching, then it's an incredibly powerful way to uh, to support people at this difficult time. And any success stories you can share with us of companies, you know, implementing a financial well-being program for their employees? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, just um, in the press about two weeks ago, uh, it was brilliant to see uh, one of our latest clients, Liqueo. Uh, publish uh, some information about how excited they were to be launching Money Health. Uh, And interestingly, Liqueo are an asset and wealth management consultancy firm. So I guess that's another example of where, uh, you know, a lot of their team are absolutely, uh, you know, experts in in their area, but still recognize that they could absolutely benefit from further support around financial well-being and, and their personal finances. Uh, So to give you uh, some stats, I do always like to back it up with some data. So the businesses that we're working with, uh, once they've implemented uh, the Money Health Financial Wellbeing solution, they're seeing uh, that their team are on average 92% more confident um, when uh, when they're being surveyed, 95% are feeling more organized, and 85% of them are feeling more knowledgeable about their finances. But it's also really interesting when you look at the impact it has on other benefits that businesses are offering. And I call this the the halo effect of money health. And a really powerful example of that is uh, pension contributions. Once employees have spoken with a coach and they've engaged with the platform, then they are 70 percent more likely to increase their pension contributions which, uh, you know, is incredible. Um, And uh, the fact that people can recognize the importance of that and then actually take action off the back of it is, uh, yeah, a huge, huge win for businesses. Charlotte, it has been amazing, you know, speaking with you and learning more about, you know, financial health and financial well-being, especially, you know, putting it together in the workplace. But before we wrap up, you know, What's the most exciting project or, you know, product you are currently working on at Evelyn and any news to share with our listeners? Yeah, well, it's actually a big time for us at Evelyn Partners right now. Uh, It's exciting. We've uh, just had one of our strongest years on record, which is uh, fantastic. That's just been um, been published. But we also have a brand new group CEO. So Paul Geddes has just joined the business. Uh, taking over from Chris Woodhouse, who's done uh, an incredible job. But it's so exciting to have this uh, new thinking and, uh, uh, yeah, the the new approach of Paul. So I think uh, I would certainly say watch this space because he is just getting his feet under the table right now. But I think uh, over 
the next year, we're going to see some really, really exciting uh, new ideas and and, uh, propositions coming out of Evelyn Partners. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Charlotte. It's a pleasure. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you so much. Likewise. And thank you so much for bringing out, you know, and speaking about such an important topic. And I really genuinely hope that every company, you know, thinks about it and implements a financial well-being, you know, program for their employees. So more power to you and your team at Evelyn. And to all our listeners, thank you once again for tuning into Coffee with Innovate Finance. Do look out for upcoming episodes and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for more on our programs and events, as well if you want to find out more about whatever, you know, Evelyn partners are are up to. As always, until next time, please take very good care of yourselves.